so I just wanted to put together this quick video um, to show you how to create sprite sheets and use animated sprite sheets within Pixie.js. So here we go. Before we get started, I want to share some updates for Pixie version 6, which is the latest version. Um, so we're going to go through in the loader example and just change how we're adding events to the loader, specifically removing the on callback. Um, we're just accessing these properties on the loader instead. So it's on progress, on load, on error. And then we just add it to those properties. Um, and we only add the callback. So we have to remove these strings um, identifying which event we're listening to. And then it should just work like normal. So I'm just gonna go through and remove the timeout where we're changing the texture and the rotation here um, so that we have a static sprite to work with. So for a sprite sheet, first we need a sequence of images because every sprite sheet is made of sequence of images. And then we're going to use an application to pack these. So I use Texture Packer. Um, they do have a demo or trial, um, free trial that you can use. Um, this has the Pixie.js format built in. So you just drag the images into it. And then you can see it supports a lot of different um, frameworks and libraries. Of course, we're gonna use Pixie.js here. Um, and then you can specify the name of the file you want it to output. It's going to output the Pixie.js um, data in a JSON file. Um, and then you can also specify the image file name that it's going to use too. Um, now, this has a lot of other properties you can manipulate as well. You can go in and adjust the maximum size, whether or not you want padding or trim, um, and like how you want it to do those things. There's a lot of different variables you can play with here. We're just gonna use the default um, settings for all this stuff. So you go ahead and hit publish sprite sheet and it's going to spit out the JSON file and the image of your packed uh, animations. So we're just gonna bring those into our project here. You can see we have the JSON and the image and then we're going to update our loader to load in the JSON file. So we don't need to worry about loading the image. It's gonna do that for us. Um, and then we need to update the reference um, to the sprite sheet instead of referencing the texture. And then we can go ahead and specify the animation um, that we wanna use. So it uses um, the file name for the animation in um, Texture Packer and mine was pixels large. So I'm just using that here. And then we need to tell it to play and update it to an animated sprite. So this is moving a little fast. What we can do is actually update the animation speed property and set it to half the speed we would normally have it run at. So this is a little better. I think we can slow it down a bit more. So I'm gonna set it to 0.1. So if we go through the documentation on Pixie.js, you can see animated sprites have a few callbacks that we can listen to and some other properties that we can look at. So let's go ahead and add an oncomplete event to our sprite so that it will log out a message when it's done animating. And so we need to set loop to false in order for this to actually complete and trigger. Otherwise it'll just loop forever. So you can see when we refresh, it runs the animation and then logs out done. So we can add another callback for on frame change, which triggers each time the frame changes within the animation. So we'll just log out the current frame of the animation each time this fires. We also need to make sure we remove the loop uh, so that we won't loop because I want to add an on loop callback. So this will trigger each time the animation loops. And this is really useful if you want to change things at a good time within the animation. So here you can see we get the sequence of our frames logged out and then it calls loop and restarts the animation. So that's pretty much it for animated sprites and sprite sheets in Pixie.js. If you want to have more elaborate control over your animations, what you can do is actually have a bunch of different animated sprites inside of an object or container and manage their visibility and playback or you could kind of roll your own because it's really just updating textures within a sprite. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See you around. Mm -hmm.